There's always a time when I finish putting together a build and go, yeah, this is a really good one. But sometimes I create something that is just so unbelievably insane, I don't even know where to start to tell you guys about it. It's been a really long time since I looked at Vault, even if my previous video on him is my second most viewed video of all time somehow. And that's because I just didn't enjoy his common manner of fortability nuke builds, but this one? You guys ain't ready for this one. Oh, and Vault is also May's favorite frame, so that's a positive, obviously. Vault has a wide variety of playstyles available to him, from nuking builds to weapons platform setups to what I am focusing on today, Melee Vault, and more specifically, the brand new Okina in Karnan. We will come back to Vault soon for what he provides here because damn is it crazy, but Okina is both really cool and also insanely strong. Okina Prime are a slash oriented set of dual daggers, they have a very high base critical and status chance of 30% and 24% alongside a high attack speed and all around just good stats. They also give an extra 5% movement speed for having them out or during quick melee, which is nice if anything. The Incarnan though? It's really quite different from anything else we have ever gotten. Once 6x combo is achieved, signified here or under your reticle, heavy attacking will activate the alternate form and cause kills to now spawn daggers that will hover around your frame before automatically targeting enemies within range and on contact, freezing them fully through 10 cold stacks and applying a singular cold stack to nearby enemies. Further benefits are an additional 100% melee base damage, 20% sprint speed, and 20% parkour velocity. The stats of these daggers are identical to those of Dual Okina, but they do not benefit from base damage increases like Prime Pressure Point or Condition Overload, which is a common pain point with Incarnan melees, though Elemental and Crit buffs do carry over as well as outside buffs like Roar or Arcane Arachne. In terms of putting together a build for them, Melee Influence is an obvious strong contender for best in slot. Spreading all elemental status procs after being triggered, that being a 20% chance on electric status proc, when combined with blast, just throwing hands, or daggers in this case, with some enemies will make them all explode for 300% of the base damage used to inflict it, alongside other obvious multipliers. Vicious Frost and Volcanic Edge to give us blast, and to really go all out for status damage, Weeping Wounds, Galvanized Elementalist, and a Bane mod are going to be slotted in here. First up with Weeping Wounds. This mod provides 440% more of our base status chance on top of it, which in our case with the Alchemy of War evolution from Tree 4 is 36%. This comes out to 194.4 and when adding in the 120% from our 6060s goes up to 237.6%. Galvanized Elementalist on the other hand is a brand new melee mod which adds 80% more status chance damage which will buff both blast and electrics dot damage while on kill, adding even more status chance at 30% per. This will stack up 4 times for another 120% status chance, bringing our value up again to 280.6. That is absolutely insane. The status damage buff here also goes up from 80% to 110% from Tree 2's evolution of Synergist Surety, which also gives 20 more base damage. The Bane mod, while not needed, is a massive buff here because it will double dip on dot damage. This is due to it being included in both the modded base damage calculation and actual blast proc damage, which utilizes the prior in its equation. Though, there is an even more powerful interaction here with the dots spread by melee influence. Because they are applied twice on damage spread by influence inherently, and the dots already benefit from that, the damage buff on them is effectively triple dipped. Also, because even I'm just learning about this right now, melee influence spreads more than just status effects but also spreads damage equal to the modded percent of the element on Okina after quantization. I'm not sure how effective or even noticeable that is, but pretty cool. Even more so is that daggers spawned by kills with Okina can be triggered by melee influence and obviously because they retain all the held version stats, they will fly out to cause massively damaging explosions on other enemies. Other mods here consist of Condition Overload for major damage increases due to the insane amount of statuses present here, Galvanized Steel for more critical chance at 110% of Okina's base 30% for a final 63%, and 120% more critical damage after getting 4 kills. Finally, Primed Reach combines with the Orican Reach evolution in Tree 3 for an insane 5.7 meters of range. Though if you want to, you can change this evo to the plus 20% sprint speed one because we have reach if you want. The status is irrelevant, though I think this one is slightly better than the other one, and for Tenokai, Dreamer's Wrath is best. With our Okina build finished, you're probably noticing we are missing one very crucial thing. 
Electric damage. We have to trigger influence somehow, and a major reason for choosing Vault for this setup specifically is his first ability augment Shock Trooper, which adds straight electric damage to your entire loadout for hold casting the ability. Starting at 100% more electric for 40 seconds, this allows us to trigger influence without the need to mod it on Okina, and is very powerful. Vault does have other bonuses here though, mainly through his second ability Speed, and our helmet of choice, Wrathful Advance. First up with Speed, it does exactly as one would assume, make you faster. Speed grants three bonuses, all scalable by strength, them being a 25% reload speed increase and a 75% increase to movement speed and attack speed. The attack speed buff is additive to other attack speed sources while the speed buff is multiplicative with other ones like Rush. This straight up eliminates the need to mod attack speed on Okina or obtain it through Arcanes or anything else because with our final strength value later, yeah that is insanely quick. Before covering Wrathful's utility here, Electric Shield does nothing but provide survivability. The base damage and critical damage multiplier present from shooting through it do not work with melees, obviously, but it will just prevent Vault from getting shot by picking it up while active, which is more than nothing. Wrathful though? Jesus Christ, this ability. The subsumed version of Wrathful adds flat melee critical chance equal to power strength. Say you have 200%, well your melee will get 200% critical chance on cast that is then added onto whatever the value it already has is. What Wrathful does for us here, like many other things Vault is providing, is allow us to completely skip out on critical chance modding for Okina as we obtain all of it from this ability. But let's talk mods, cause it isn't that simple. Strength wise, the only two universal mods we use here is Blind Rage for 99% more with a 45% cut to our efficiency and Power Drift for 15% more strength and a slight knockdown resist. The rest of it is going to come from both Precision Intensify and Arcane Ice Storm. First up with Ice Storm, the Okina's daggers on contact with enemies immediately freeze them, and with the activation requirement for this arcane being to do just that, we can trigger this very easily by just playing. The bonuses here are a plus 40 to our duration and strength, which honestly, those are the only stats this build needs, so this is a definite slot for me. Precision and Intensify on the other hand adds 90% more strength only for our fourth ability, which in this case is Wrathful Advance, and when considering other buffs present, makes this ability provide 344% flat melee critical chance. Okina already has 63% CC because of Galvanized Steel, and when added together pushes us just over the threshold for permanent tier 4 crits or reds with an exclamation point. Why do that though instead of just getting more strength for our entire kit, like Shock Trooper and Speed? Well, it has a lot to do with elemental weighting. Trooper already provides a lot of electric to Okina, and if we give too much then the proc chance of blast is going to go way down relative to electric, and a healthy balance is much more appealing here. Also, tier 4 crits. Enough said. Besides that, the augment itself obviously, prime continuity and narrow minded really bump up our duration alongside ice storm to give us 294 total, so duration here is really comfy and means 45% efficiency isn't an issue because you barely need to cast your abilities at all. These last three slots are devoted entirely to survivability as otherwise this build has none. The way we are going to do it though is take advantage of shield gating, but not in the annoying way of spamming abilities to maintain catalyzing. This one is much more passive, you literally don't need to do anything. Fast deflection and vigilante vigor increase shield recharge rate while decreasing the delay before it begins. This means that 0.2 seconds after our shields have broken, which with Vault's base 555 grants a 1.7 second shield gate, our shields will start to regen at a rate of 106.9 per second, which is very fast and makes you functionally immortal. Pair this with the KPM already performed by this build and parkour maneuvers inherent evasion stats and you don't need any other survivability mods though rolling guard is included just to be safe but you could swap it out for prime redirection or something. Aura wise you don't need anything too specific I just use steel charge but corrosive projection would also work or something like enemy radar it is up to you. Arcane Fury is again a flex slot, you can use Aegis if you think you need it, I don't really think you do, and this one is 180% more melee base damage. Not that it is needed, but also, why not? Primary and secondary are irrelevant here. This build can take anything you throw at it, Focus School is free, but for a companion, Nautilus with Cordon and Manifold Bond is great, use it with a Hellstrom and Duplex Bond to spread even more statuses for Condition Overload, and you are set. This vault build guys, what the hell? One melee swing. Just one. It's absolutely insane, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I have been. I was on the phone with May, and the idea hit me, and I just straight got up and said, yo, that'd be disgusting, like verbatim. And here we are. The content has been cooking lately. Seriously, thank you guys for the amazing reception on all of the videos. After I put this one out, that will be five videos, four of which are 
full length content, which is hard for me, in a week. What? I wasn't even doing that when I was uploading garbage. Seriously, thank you guys. An even bigger thank you to my immensely generous and awesome supporters too. If you want to get in the action early because they had this video before y'all did, the links are down below. I appreciate all of you guys so much though. Stay safe. I will see you next for Komei Part 2. I got a lot to say. Peace.